I encouraged her as a single mom to rekindle her relationship with her sister, who's a free spirit, always between jobs, and known for heavy partying. Her sister lives with four guys they've known since middle school. They seemed cool the few times I hung out with them. Welcome to the 87% of you who have not subscribed and the 13% who have to the hallowed halls of Magic's monologue. I'm Magic, your curator of personal growth and the sage keeper of the keys to today's tome of wisdom and knowledge. Today's video, I'm leaving her tonight. I thank Mary, my super fan, for sending this to me. But before embarking on an expedition through the vast collections of life's lessons and bad choices, demonstrate your eagerness with a thumbs up, subscribe, and smack that bell like a victory bell signaling success to become a patron of wisdom. So stow your baggage of doubts, grab a ticket to success, and let's enjoy this ride together. This video is going to be a long one, so pause it, go get your popcorn, preferably with real butter, as I tell the tale of a man who learns the hard way while single MOMs are for recreation only, and barring the rare exception, is a bad idea, like betting your life savings on a horse in the Kentucky Derby named Glue Factory Bound. Let's begin the journey. I've been with my partner for three years and I've lived in this city for five. In the beginning, everything was great. This is why we call it the honeymoon phase of the relationship. She has a daughter whom I've grown to love as my own, even though her biological father is still in the picture. I changed everything for them, moved to a bigger apartment, switched jobs to make more money, and I did my best to give them the peace of mind they deserved. It was better than I ever imagined until this weekend. Slap to the back of the head. Did you notice, gentlemen, at no point did he state what she brought to the table? Did you see how he gave up his drive and his purpose and his life became all about being a white knight beta provider? It is one thing if this child is your genetic legacy or lineage. However, in this case, it's not. Now let me point out something. There are times and specific circumstances when taking care of a child that is not biologically yours is the right thing to do. And this story is not one of them. That's when I discovered she's been cheating on me with her sister's roommate. I had encouraged her to rekindle her relationship with her sister, who is a free spirit, always between jobs, and known for heavy partying. Her sister lives with four guys they've known since middle school. They seem cool the few times I've hung out with them, so I never thought twice when she wanted to visit her sister slap to the back of the head. Let me repeat this act of stupidity. I encouraged her to rekindle her relationship with her sister, who was a free spirit, we all know what that means, always between jobs, hmm, and known for heavy partying. And her sister lives with four guys. Now, that sounds like a Hollywood sitcom, but let's not go there. Lesson alert here, guys. He encouraged her to reestablish a relationship and hang out with a family member 
who can't keep a freaking job, drinks and parties and is irresponsible. Oh, and lives with four single guys. In what universe did you think that was a good idea? As a rule, human beings are on average an average of the five people they hang out with. This is especially true for women. Most women, whether they are capable of honestly admitting to this or not, are mirrors. Understand, women more often than not are not independent thinkers. They do not think in terms of, is this the truth? They think from the mental frame of, will others accept me if I think this is true? Or this behavior, regardless of its morality, is acceptable. This mentality originates back to, well, let's call it tribal times, when women and beta males would conform to whatever the tribe's consensus was to avoid or facing exile. Over years and years of conditioning, this has become habitual in a way women think. They follow whatever trend, political stance, or social norm that is the most popular at the current time within their peer groups. They spend the most time or have the most influence over them. Men, on the other hand, are more logic-based. Can we be subject to the same thing? Yes. However, not to the degree that women are. It's just evolutionary biology. During our Memorial Day weekend camping trip, while she was in the bathroom with her daughter, I grabbed her phone to look at some videos she'd taken. But curiosity got the better of me and I went through her messages. That's when I saw the text to her sister's roommate. I felt paralyzed like I was going to black out, but somehow I managed to gather myself. I took screenshots of the text as proof and put her phone back in her bag. I didn't say anything to her. We only had a few hours left on the trip and I wanted to spend those hours with her daughter. Good. I counsel, do not immediately confront here, guys. Bear with me. Shove that rage into a box, lock it down tight, and play chess, not checkers. Gather your evidence, act like nothing's wrong, get proof, and then plan your exit strategy. Then see a lawyer to know what your legal liabilities are since, in some places, even if you own the house, you can't just throw her out. For those of you who are married, check out my video, 10 Mistakes Men Make in Divorcing Adulterous Wives for Infidelity. I'll post the link in the description and note the black link up in the corner to click on. When you do confront her, record it, and don't do it alone, preferably with a female. Have the evidence ready because they will attempt to lie, deflect, and turn it around on you. Having a witness short circuits the playing victim to the police to have you falsely accused of anything. For the past few days, I've been thinking about what to do. The best solution I can think of is to pack my stuff and ghost her. Tomorrow morning, I'm quitting my job, and after she leaves for work, I'll grab my things and leave. I'll print out the messages I read and leave them for her. I'm still in a daze. My whole life feels like it's gone now. The future I saw for us is nothing. I'm not sure how to process any of this. Tonight, I have to lie next to her knowing that's what's coming, and I'm not sure I won't break down. All right, 
I'm sorry for you, my brother. And frankly, this is probably the smart way to play this. Update one. First, I want to thank everyone for their kind words and advice. I'm doing the best I can right now. I'm meeting with my boss in an hour to wrap things up. I've decided to talk to her daughter's biological father about my leaving since we've had a good relationship. I want to give him a heads up on what's coming. As for the apartment, we only have three months left on the lease. I plan to pay for the remaining months so her daughter has somewhere to stay for the time being. I made sure she knew I loved her and always will. Holding her this morning, knowing it was the last time I would ever see her, was the most difficult thing I've ever done. It took everything inside of me not to sob while doing it. I'll update you all later once I have all my stuff and I'm away from the city. Thank you again for your kind words and they mean more than you know. Update number two. I know I said I would update when it was all over, but you guys are right. I should talk to her daughter before I go. So when her biological dad picks her up from daycare, I'll meet them and talk to her in person. It means a lot that he's letting me do this. Hopefully, it's enough closure for her. Update number three. I met up with her biological dad and the little one. You guys were right. I finally needed to have that conversation with her. I let her know that even if I'm not there, I'll always love her and that it isn't her fault that I'm leaving. I did cry. I cried a lot. I know it will eventually fade from her memory and become just someone she vaguely remembers. But I'll remember her until my last breath. Okay, come on, enough with the drama. I never knew I wanted kids until she came into my life and showed me what true, pure love is. I thanked her dad for letting me have that moment with her. I gave him that Disneyland picture in case she ever asked about me. He's aware of what went down and who my ex is spending her time with. Yes, well, you did encourage that. Granted, she's an adult, but you did load the bullet in the gun. As for my ex, I left the screenshots on the kitchen table along with my key to the apartment. I blocked her number and my and her family as well and my family has done the same. I also blocked any mutual friends in case she tries to reach me through them. It's crazy to leave behind the last five years of my life but honestly I can't stay here. My brother is taking me in out in LA until I figure out my next move. I'm off all social media, and once I get to my brother's, I'll change my number. I'm sorry if this update is anticlimactic, but that's how I wanted it to go down. Ultimately, it's the best way. Cut it off, neat and clean, and move on in my opinion. I'll update you guys when I'm all settled. I just want to say that I love them with every ounce of my being. I'll miss the walks around the apartment complex, the random trips to Walgreens, watching Sophia the first until I memorize the episodes by heart. Okay, this is one of these moments where I want to reach out and get my emergency testosterone EpiPen and jam him in the thigh. Watching Sophia the first until I memorized the episodes by heart, and especially coming home from work and feeling like I mattered, feeling like I had a purpose, and that no matter what went on during the day, 
all of it wouldn't matter once I opened the door. I'll miss all of it, but I know deep down I have to let it go. Be safe, everyone. I'll try to update soon. Dude, you need therapy. I suspect you had a poor childhood because your need to be needed is a flame to the exploitive, toxic female moth. Everything in my gut right now tells me she saw you coming. If I'm right and you don't fix this, it'll happen again. In the comments section below, give your advice or share your insights on this vulnerability he has, which can be exploited again. Update number four. I want to thank you all for the support, even the few negative comments I received. It's nice knowing I wasn't completely alone through the early parts of this whole situation. I'm at my brother's now, still getting set up, but I'm hopeful things will be better in time. I'll be honest, it's brutal right now, and I'm still constantly flooded with sadness. On the drive here, I had to pull over and let it all out. I'm sure right now we would be having dinner or watching a movie, and instead, I'm on my brother's porch, trying not to cry while I type this out. I haven't heard anything from my ex yet, which is helping, but knowing her, she'll try to find a way to reach me. Everything reminds me of them. I saw a Little Mermaid poster earlier, and I almost lost it. I never got to take the little one to see it, and that just kills me. I keep wondering what I was missing or where, where I came up short for this to happen. I've run circles around it, and I can't explain it. Here, let us help you out, my brother. You dated, and you got into a serious relationship with a single M-O-N. Then, you pushed her to hang out with her 304 sister, who had separated herself from in the first place. And bang! A plus B plus C, your deep-seated need to be loved and needed, i.e. White Knight Syndrome, equals D. The destruction and of the delusional fantasy you were living called a relationship. It was always about the resources you could provide, dude. You were doomed to be number three or lower in her priorities no matter what you did or how hard you loved her. I hope I heal fast from this, but I have a whole life to live. I hope I did enough for the little one to not have been hurt by all of this. I hope she keeps a sliver of me in her memory, and I hope she is loved like I loved her. Again, thank you all for the positivity and encouragement. I'll make it through this. I've done it before, and I'll do it again. Pause. So what you're saying is, this has happened to you before? Hmm. Maybe I'll update sometime in the future. Or feel free to send me a message. Be safe, and I wish everyone the absolute best. Final update. Hello, everyone. I wanted to again express my appreciation for all the positive comments and messages I've received. They've really helped me stay sane during this ordeal. I'm settling in as well as I can here in LA. It's a bit crazy, but it's helped me, helped to distract me. I still haven't spoken to my ex, but I did call my old landlord. 
He said my ex went a bit crazy for a few days after I left, but eventually her family came and moved her out. He hasn't heard from her since. I've thought about calling her daughter's biological dad to check on the little one, but I keep reminding myself that I'm not ready for that yet. Also, I don't want to give her hope that I'll be coming back. Plus, that's not really my role anymore, as sad as it is to say that. I've given myself time to feel everything I needed to feel. The sadness, the anger, the anxiety, the confusion, all of it. I did wonder how I was going to manage to put it all back together, but every day that passes, it gets easier. I know a day will come when I completely stop thinking about her, but for now, I find her in a lot of what I do. Her laugh, her scent, her smile, everything. Some of the best times of my life were with her by my side, and it almost feels like I'm in a bad dream that I'm due to wake up from. Take note, guys. Pay attention to what he's focusing on and his choice of words. Can we say this is a guy who has bought into many of the romantic lies of the media and romantic comedies and Disney flicks? Do we not see a case of one-itis here? Breakups suck. What happened to him sucks. And there are an estimated 25 to 30 million single women aged 21 to 40 in the United States. Hell, in Los Angeles, California, it is approximately 450,000. In short, there are more fish in the sea, and he should be acting accordingly. I sincerely hope she matures from this because she has a little girl depending upon her. A little girl who looks up to her and loves her. My brother's condo is near Disneyland and seeing all the families walking around is bittersweet for me. It's bitter because I wish that were me, but sweet because I know that one day it will be me. Thank you again to everyone for your kind words. I wish you all the absolute best. Okay, in the comments section below, give your thoughts on this story and share your own experiences and list off your reasons why dating most single MOMs is a bad idea. If you are the 76% of men who find value in my channel and the 13% of women, please show it by doing three things. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and share this with at least three friends who need to learn from this channel. Send me your personal relationship stories to share, or if you see an article online you think I should cover, Send the link to stories at magicsmonologue.com. If you have a moment, stop by my YouTube community tab and vote on my surveys, or subscribe to my locals, Rumble, Twitter, Getter, or Gab. Through this, you are leading by example, encouraging other men to rise higher and ensuring you live a life of passion, purpose, and prosperity. If you can't wait for my next new video, click on one of these right now and enjoy another. Until next time.